right, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Wes. And today we're reviewing a very, very special car. But first, if you are new here, every single weekday live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we live stream review a brand new Kia or Hyundai product. Sometimes we do one, sometimes we do the other, and sometimes we bring them both in and compare them again in a live stream. So we do it so we can actually engage with you guys as we're talking about the car. Not only that, but gives a kind of our own opinions too, mm -hmm. as well as just some product knowledge too, so. Yeah, absolutely. So these videos are not scripted. It's just us talking about the car. And if you're curious about what the 2024 Sonata N-Line offers, because it just arrived here in Canada, it offers a lot. And we're gonna talk about everything we love about it, some things we wish could be changed, yep. and then what our thoughts on it are compared to the previous model year. And I think you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Now, Indeed. usually we have a very long intro. <laughs> Sorry, Wes. Right. I'm just going to sum it up real quick. So again, we do these videos every weekday. We give you all the tips and tricks on these cars, walk you through them on the inside and out. But we do them for another reason, not just for your YouTube enjoyment. It's also because we sell these cars. So we have two Hyundai stores, Brantford Hyundai and Owen Sound Hyundai. Yep. You can find Wes at our Hyundai store. And then we also have a Kia store where we sell all new and used Kia models. All right. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, I think we should roll into the car. Sounds good. There's a lot to review, so. Yes, there's a lot to cover today. Mm -hmm. So as I said earlier, this is a refreshed model. It has a new look, it's got new tech, oh, and geez. there's a couple new changes to the powertrain I think you'll really like. This one is the N-Line, so it's the top trim available here in Canada. If you're looking at the entry, it's called the Preferred with Trend. If you want something smack dab in the middle, you get something really nice. You'll get the Preferred with Trend plus all-wheel drive. That's a first for the Sonata here in Canada. Now, the N-Line doesn't have all-wheel drive, but it's got a lot of other things going for it. Let's take a look at the front end first. So, brand new for 2024, they refreshed the entire front end. You can see our daytime running light is a Horizon style, so it spans all the way across the hood, offers a very futuristic look. If you're asking what I think compared to last year, I didn't like the guppy look of the previous model year. This looks much more futuristic, modern, and sleek. And I'm gonna say sleek a lot in this video because, whew, this car. It looks good and it looks smooth. <laughs> all right, now for the front grille, you can see we've got a lot of glossy black elements and that's gonna expand all the way through the car, even on the interior. So our grille is this beautiful mesh style, glossy black, like I mentioned. And in the very center, you have your front radar plate. Now that plate is gonna be utilized for a couple different features. Number one, your forward collision avoidance. So this vehicle features an advanced form of collision avoidance. Essentially, it's gonna pick up vehicles, pedestrians, and even cyclists. If it senses the risk of a collision and you don't react as a driver, the car will warn you inside and then apply emergency braking to mitigate a collision, which is very smart for this car. We also have that for our smart cruise control that works all the way up to stop and go. So if you're someone who drives in traffic, you'll absolutely love it. And then also our highway drive assist, which essentially uses your smart cruise control and navigation information, combines it into one and provides an almost self-driving experience. It's not full of self-drive, don't do that. <laughs> So that sums up our kind of our front look. We'll take a nice, nice look at the actual headlight unit now. So your main headlights are located right down here. Again, full LED, so very, very bright. And then of course, it looks really good with the revamped styling. Wes, what are your thoughts? Completely love the front end of this car. Yeah. Uh, not only with the dual LEDs for like your high and low beams, mm -hmm. but the actual look not being built up. And then also when you do the turn signals, a little yeah. hidden feature with this particular one over some of the, the Kona in that. Let's indicate to turn. <laughs> Check it out. Absolutely love that. So you still have the white in behind it, but then with the amber going as well, you get it on the side marker too. It looks really good. It's super, super nice touches. And it wouldn't be a Kia Hyundai channel review without talking about what's under the hood. And if you're looking at the end line specifically, you're gonna be really impressed. So we have a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. I'm having, there we go, an issue. Hydraulic hood, mm -hmm. 291 horsepower with 311 pound feet of torque. And let me tell you, I drove this car from my Hyundai store. It's a fun car to drive, it's pretty nice. Another thing for our transmission, it's an eight speed wet type dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters and rev matching. It's a very, very fun vehicle to drive. So I mentioned the horsepower, mentioned the torque. Another thing you'll be pleased to know about this car is it does have launch control, not lunch control. I almost said that earlier. <laughs> for our wheels, we get 19 inch alloys with Pirelli P0 tires. Looking at the very center, you have your end line cap. So add some nice sporty flair. You'll notice a lot more glossy black around the vehicle, like I mentioned earlier. So your grill, and then to your turn signal repeaters located on the very right side, you'll notice that it also states end line right up at the top with a little flash of red in the end. For your mirrors, they are glossy black again, so it's gonna provide a nice contrast if you choose an exterior paint color other than black. 
If you like a black exterior color, let me tell you, the car's gonna look very sleek, very smooth. <laughs> Everything's gonna be cohesive. Again, on other paint colors, you will also get these glossy black accents around your window and door sills. Another thing we haven't seen in any of our Hyundai product before is the inclusion of gloss black on your door handle. So it's body color, oh. but with that black contrast. So something small, but let me tell you, I like it. I really do like it. Another thing that's different about these door handles, especially if you're comparing it to last year's Hyundai Sonata, is you may notice there's no button over here, but there is an indent. So Wes might have to get pretty close to pick that up. Oh. Yep. So see, there's just a slight indent there. So you may think, oh, I have to use my keys. I gotta press on my keys to unlock the car. Don't worry, keys are still last year. All you have to do is slide your hand underneath the door handle. And as long as the key is somewhere on you, it could even be in your bag, your door will unlock itself or your car will unlock itself. When you go to leave your vehicle, press on that indent and it locks it for you. So it's still a keyless experience. And then of course it is a push to start. So you really don't have to touch your keys if you don't want to. Another thing that you get with that digital key to touch is the ability to use near field communication. So what you'd use for Apple Pay, for example, on your phone to unlock and start your car. So you can utilize everything from your phone. For your rear end, you can see we're getting that seamless horizon style again. So your rear tail lamp is extremely extremely <laughs> is expanded across the rear end of the vehicle full led just trying to pick up on some of the care like the little hidden features like oh, the indentations yeah. in the sub panel mm -hmm. you can kind of see it but in person it it's just a little styling touch that i will say our video quality is never that good again because this is a live streamed video in person this car has so much into it you really have to experience it for yourself and hey if you're around town our Brantford hyundai store has one right now come take a look now for the exhaust, this is where things get fun. So this is a sports exhaust, of course, and it does have active sound design, which you can turn off if you'd like. But the twin tip dual exhaust, whoo, it looks aggressive yeah, and it sounds I'm, aggressive too. I'm excited to see what these would sound like under load with mm -hmm. a little bit of exhaust refinement because yeah. the, the plan, <laughs> the Wes initial, looks so passionate yeah, right now. <laughs> it's, I'm getting, I'm stumbling over the words because I know the excitement of what I would do to this car. And yeah. it's, it would be a very fun time, let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but even if you're keeping it stock, let me tell you, it sounds real nice. You flip it in the sport, it is an active exhaust system, so it does sound a bit more aggressive versus if you're driving in a normal mode. Now for the rear, again, we do have this lip spoiler, so glossy black stands out on exterior paints other than black. If you get a black exterior, it'll look smooth. It'll match well. All right, one thing I love about this vehicle, it's got a power lift, so it's still a little icy right now. We still got stickers on it but you can unlatch it from either pressing the button on the very back, your key fob, or the button by the driver's side. We have our summer mats in here. Like I said, we just got this car. And I will say there is no spare tire, but we do get a mobility kit. So that's gonna allow you to patch your wheel up and get back on the road as soon as you can. It takes about five, not five minutes. Oh my goodness, 15 minutes. Five minutes if you're really, really fast. I think it's f just over 440 cubic for like the actual trunk space, mm -hmm. which puts it like right in the middle of its class. So. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot of space in there. It's very spacious. So I will say this vehicle kind of has a two-door coupe look to it, for sure. Again, tying in with that sleek look, but you'll be really impressed with how much leg room and just headroom you have in the vehicle. It doesn't look like as spacious as it really is. Before I hop in, I'm gonna have Wes show the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. You'll see we have a mix of Napa leather and suede. It's almost this very, it's not, I wouldn't say it's black but it's not a light gray. It's not as light as it's appearing on camera. It's definitely darker than that. Yeah, I'm trying. So I'll put my, these are black jeans beside the actual seat. So it's kind of like a medium gray, I would call it. Yeah. But there's not really. A soft black, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> All right, also for the seats, there is red piping along them with red stitching. And then in the um, upper backrest area, you do have some more end line embossing. So it looks very, very sleek. These seats are extremely comfortable. A lot of times the sport bucket seats, they're not exactly comfortable for long rides just because they're meant more so for a 40, sport, 40, sporty, grippy feel. Um, and they are also powered with, check it out, bolster support. So you can adjust the lumbar support and the bolstering on the seat. You can also make it that whenever you switch it into sport mode, the bolsters will suck you in or hold you. It's like it's giving you a hug. Yeah, we, we all need to, to be held sometimes. <laughs> Oh, All right. I'll oh, Wes, before you go side. over, come back, come back. <laughs> There's a couple more things I want to point out about the Sonata before I have Wes join me. So we have a Bose premium sound system. You can only get this on the end line trim level. You also have memory seats, so two different driver settings there. And I'm happy to say it does also save your mirror control. So if you have two drastically different heights for your drivers, 
You will love that. Mirror controls, window controls, you know, the usual. The front two windows, so driver and passenger, are automatic, so you just drop them down, put them up with a touch of a button or one quick press. You don't have to hold them the whole time. There is red piping along the vents. Some lighting adjustments here, so if your dash is a bit too bright for you, you don't have to go through your menus, settings or menus in the screen. You can do it from here. Traction control, so shut it off. Shut off your stability control. Have some fun. Safe fun. And then our electronic parking brake. There's also the power lift gate for your trunk as well, too. If you want to open that up, then you can close it. All right, Wes, now you can come over. All right. Oh, let's do another engine look as we swing around here. I apologize for all the beeping you guys are going to hear. Just turning the car back on. Okay. All right. Now oh inside, gosh. I love what they've done with the place. Like I mentioned, there's red piping all across the dash, both in the stitching of the um, soft touch area here and the vents itself. Ties in with that sporty end line theme. The sound system, of course, we can't display it on our live stream because we don't want to get copyrighted. It sounds amazing. Bose always does a great job and you have eight speakers peppered throughout the car so everyone gets a nice experience. This is new, so I've never come across this on any Hyundai product before, but I like it. So it's a dual zone climb control, meaning I can set my temp, Wes can have his, or we can sync them up nice and easy. It is still a button, so that makes it very user friendly. You have the option of automated climate control or you can adjust it to whatever you prefer, so by utilizing the fan speed manually. Heated steering wheels right over there. So you get two different levels of heated steering wheel. And do you guys see that feedback? Those blue lines every time you touch something? That's how you know you change something. I like it's, that. It's hard to pick up, but it's it's a flat panel touchscreen yes. with physical buttons as well. So it, it's interesting, but... Um, especially because our vehicles are coming with such bigger screens and a lot of crucial information is displayed on the screens. People ask, what about glare if it's a sunny day? These are anti-glare screens, so you should never have an issue with actually seeing the information you need. Um, again, so steering wheel is controlled here as well as your heated seats. One thing I promised I would be truthful with this review, I'm kind of disappointed that this vehicle doesn't have ventilated seats. I find it a little bit strange for a top trim mobile, especially considering the lower trims do have it. Wes, what do you think? I was very shocked to see that, especially going from, say, like the Kona end lines where it does have that is the only time you can get the option. So yeah. it was interesting to see some of the things that they took out versus what they've included, yeah. especially when you go to like the lower trim, you get more yeah. for certain aspects. So, But I got to say, I'm not completely heartbroken over it. I have ventilated seats in my car and sometimes it just makes your pants feel wet. So... I don't know. <laughs> Heated seats are definitely a must though. So that's all your climb control there. Nice and easy to use. I like how even though it's not buttons buttons, it's still not a screen you have to flip for in your actual nav unit. We have some physical buttons right over here. So one for home, map, search, you name it. Search is probably the greatest function Hyundai has ever incorporated into their car. Because if you're getting a new vehicle, there's a ton of tech packed into it. Let's say you can't seem to find where your highway drive assist is. Why not type it in here? And then your vehicle will take you right to it. <laughs> Drive assist. So it's just going to search under setup. Oh, maybe not. I'll do ambient lighting. <laughs> maybe not highway drive assist. <laughs> you guys are on your own for that. Ambient lighting. Now, this one also hasn't been fully signed in. Yes. So because it's not registered to anybody yet, some things are not actually active. Yeah, but... some things are out of bounds. Um, I will say though, ambient lighting looks really nice on this car. You can see that changed over to red. It's also on your door as well too. So Wes mm. has his open. Yeah. But once he here. closes it, you'll be able to see it. All right, check that out right over there. Change it to whatever color you want, turn it off. It's totally up to you. Driver assistance is where you can play around with some of your safety settings. And of course, this vehicle is absolutely packed. Even with standard features, it's there's a lock one on over here. So under driving convenience is where you can turn things on, change them if they're a bit too sensitive for you, and truly make this vehicle how you like to drive it. Um, so we talked about the buttons, we talked about the ventilation. Let's talk about the steering wheel and the general driver area. So Wes, I'm going to take that from you. Yep. One thing again that's new is... The transmission so i mentioned it's an eight speed dual clutch but it's also shift by wire so this is your actual gear shift it's a little strange at first but i promise you it's very smooth shifting your park is right over there think tesla think mercedes same kind of idea call and mounted gear shift we're going back <laughs> oh yeah all right now right behind the steering wheel you have your paddle shifter so upshift downshift i can't show you what the screen looks like when you actually do upshift and downshift but oh, it is so nice i love that We've got to do a test drive video on this car. 
The steering wheel itself is leather wrapped and heated. You can see there's some more red stitching all throughout. It's not a flat bottom, but you do have the sporty element of the inline badging right at the bottom. On the left side, you'll have your driver convenience. So this is gonna turn on your cruise control. This is how you'll set your speed, set your following distance with this button here. There are four different presets. And then we have our steering assistance on the bottom right. Steering assistance is absolutely smooth. It keeps your car centered, but it'll also take upcoming curves of the road for you. Right up here is our menu control. So right now you can see our regular display. We can also cycle and take a look at different elements. So our distance to empty, our, sorry, I shouldn't say distance to empty, our trip, navigation, lane assist, you name it, you can check it out. Now with that being said, it's reading quite bad for fuel efficiency. That's because this vehicle hasn't really been driven. The only driving it's done is to quickly start it up to show people or me driving it over to Brantford Kia and Probably wasn't the most efficient drive this car will be on. <laughs> now this car is rated for 8.8 .8 liters per hundred kilometers and that is quite good for an almost 300 horsepower sedan. Not bad. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't complain if it was <laughs> if it was in my garage, that's for sure. Exactly. All right, so we talked about the steering wheel and the controls. You also have your voice commands and volume controls right at the touch of a button. Really like how it's on the steering wheel. That's about it for the driver area. Let's talk a little bit more about convenience. So Hyundai released this in the redesigned Kona and I've been loving it since. This USB-C port right over here can be utilized for both data and charging, or you can switch it over and have it just for charging, which is very nice. On top of that, you have another fast charger. Everyone knows USB-Cs charge way quicker and new phones are being switched over. And then we have a 12 volt on the very side. Right below, we have our wireless phone charger, which again is an N-Line exclusive, so you're not gonna get that on the other trims. And there's just a lot of space in the area as well too, so if you like to toss your keys around there, you totally can. This confused me a little bit as I was driving. So the drive mode select, it looks like it should be a toggle, like you push it up, push it down. It's actually just a button. It is, but with its placement, so yeah, it it's sense. it's exactly perfect for the armrest. And this little thing, I don't know, it's not really something that you see in any of the other vehicles anymore right now. Just yeah. everything's going to that such an open concept, but yeah. this little extra couple of inches. Do I look natural? It's, well, let me zoom out here, but like the whole thing just, flo <laughs> the whole thing just flows it together. Flows nice, yeah. It's driver focused without breaking in that center line, kind of yeah. like the Elantra with that big bar here. Yeah. It's, it's, I just like, it's, they did a really good job on it, in my opinion. Yeah, but. sorry, Wes. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'm going to lift this up. You can see tons of space. It's not exactly very deep, but it is quite wide, so great center console. This does not, I mean, it does come with the car, but it's just stickers, so that's just going to be a nice black surface. Cup holders, pretty straight up, good size. This one's a little bit larger, but they both have adjustments. Extra phone holder. Yeah, extra phone, key slot, whatever you want to put in there, business cards perhaps, sunglasses, because you may notice there is no sunglass holder in this vehicle. And that is, when I mentioned at the beginning of this video that there's a couple things I don't like, that's one thing I'm not a fan of. But nonetheless, let's keep going. Yeah. Sunroof's huge. Yeah, so it it, is. it's a panel roof, extends all the way to the back, but the glass portion only opens to about here, which is pretty standard on a sedan like this. Um, black headliner as well too. No one appreciates a black headliner until they don't have it. It provides such a more moody, sporty experience inside the cabin. I don't know. It just feels very premium. I absolutely love it. What about you? I agree. I I have dyed so many gray upper headliners in my time that it's just it's I can one only of those imagine the paint like, smell after a while. Oh, well, I, it's you waited. Yeah, it was left outside to air out for a yeah. while. Um, on a final note, I think I'll just mention the start button. So regular mm -hmm. push to start, but it is cased in that glossy red finish. Yeah, it, another subtle touch that again doesn't need to be there, but it's there. Everything in line with the red trim and everything too in the end line. Perfectly inline done. or end line? That's a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. All right, now we'll check out the back of this vehicle, see where we're at for space, and um, see what it's like back there. Right. Okay. And around we go. All right. So seats back here. I had the driver's seat about to how I would drive the car since I was the last one driving it. Um, you can see. For knee room, there's a ton of it. There's absolutely a lot of space back here. Underneath the seat, I do have a little bit of height so I can kick my toesies under there. If you have longer feet, you have a place to mess them. It's pretty comfortable. The seats themselves, you do have the suede insert on the two main portions with a little bit of that Napa leather continue on. 
I do love how Hyundai never seems to skip out on design for the rear. So many brands do. I'm going to point out the Honda Civic Type R, for example. Front seats, sporty, tons of fun. Back seats, base model. Why? I don't know. Nonetheless, this car provides all that power, all that sportiness, and doesn't skip out on your back seat passengers. In the very center, you have a cup holder armrest, and I think this is one of the widest ones I've ever seen. Yeah, you can both, literally both passengers yeah. can have an arm on each side and yeah. still have space. Yeah, there's a lot of real estate back here. Um, cup holders are just general cup holders, nothing too fancy going on there. Folds back in nice, and it doesn't have a tether, so it kind of provides a more clean look. I do get a little bit of visibility out of that sunroof, like I mentioned, and it, overall it just kind of opens up this interior. Headroom-wise, again, I'm not the tallest person, so I kind of suck at showing this, but fully reclined. I have a good amount, but that much space. It is also, I, I don't know if the camera's really picking it up, but there's a bubble yeah. above the head space on each side. Yeah, so it does curve upwards to provide a little bit more headroom. Uh, back here, I mean, the rear, of the front seats, they're plastic, so it's super easy to clean. You do have air vents, which is very nice. Two USB-Cs in the very back for fast charging. And then the center hump is not too high. Again, of course, because this is not an all-wheel drive, you're not gonna have that major hump that really limits the amount of legroom for your center passenger. So I could sit here and be overall pretty comfortable. The seat itself is yep. quite wide. And still good head clearance yep. as well. Fantastic headroom. And I get a beautiful view, actually, let me show. <laughs> So if you want a full pan of the driver's area, this is what you're looking at. The screens, you get dual 12.3 inch displays, so your gauge cluster and your main head unit is all that 12 and a quarter or 12.3 inch. Um, another thing I didn't point out because I can't connect my phone to it because we're filming is the CarPlay is wireless. Your Android Auto, wireless. Everything, wireless experience. So I really do like that. And it does have the new CCNC software, so you get over-the-air updates via digital key to touch. I was about to say vehicle to load, not that. Uh, but lots of great tech in this vehicle. Very user-friendly and very, very impressive. I want to see what you guys have to say, so we're going to go back to our TV area and answer some questions. Let's hop out. It's right. a lot of stickers I didn't take off on the car either, That's I'm noticing right. now. Ooh. Do those time out or is that? Yeah, the lights okay. are motion sensors, so when we're in the car, it doesn't oh, pick okay. us up. Switch this around here. All right, thanks. Oh, there we go. Okay. And <laughs> Japan Quake said, also Japan Quake, it's nice to see you. It's been a while. Um, he said, it's free real estate. Free real estate. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of real estate in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So if you are a little bit tight on space in an Elantra and something of that nature is kind of in your avenue, it, Gives you that added space. There's space even for a car seat and all the rest of it too, so. I will say, so I personally work at our Kia store, so I've seen the rise and fall of the Kia sports sedans. Yeah. If you haven't heard already, I'm gonna break the bad news. Last year they discontinued the Kia Stinger, which was our GT sports sedan. So it had all wheel drive, it had five seats, it was comfy, it was a hatchback, it was phenomenal. It's gone. They also got rid of the Kia K5 this year, which is the Sonata's sister car. So yeah. same horsepower, same engine, same transmission, but it died. Now the Sonata it's, is the last one standing. Yeah, we're down to two actual sedans now in the yes. grand scheme of it with, with Hyundai and that. So it's, it's a little sad and only one vehicle currently that is still available in manual. So it's uh, sad times for those of us who like <laughs> our performance sedans, but it is, it's just way of the times, but. Uh, Kevin, well, yeah, it was Kevin FM s sent us $2 and said, convince me to buy one over the Camry TRD. Very different cars, must uh, I say. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Like, to me, this looks a lot better than the TRD Camry. Um, mm -hmm. The TRD Camry's pretty tired at this point as far as interior. It's been the same since like 2018, I want to say. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of how the GTR has been the same forever Ten at years. this point. So it's been more than that now. Yeah. Oh, wait, to, what's that? For 2024? 16 years it's been relatively the same. But So I will say manufacturers like that, they often just do refreshes and they never kind of add new things. It's mm -hmm. just minor, minor tweaks, but the price always seems to go up and up and up. Yeah. So mm, um, I will also say the TRD is a V6. There's a little difference there. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but. and all-wheel drive. Um, very different vehicles. That one's going to consume a bit more in the fuel efficiency department, a little bit more horsepower, but at what cost, might I say? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's 
both are beautiful cars, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had enough, enough time with this one to get out and actually drive one any more than just around the parking lot, but yeah. I am looking forward to it. But it will be one of those cars that if you are looking for a performance sedan, it's it would be one of the ones to, to look at. Mm -hmm. um, John Madison's asking Wi-Fi hotspot. So it does not have a Wi-Fi hotspot. No. It, from the car itself, no. Um, Wes, will you add the Sonata N-Line to your collection? Uh, <laughs> the smile. I've not at this point, haven't had plans for that. I do have plans for another vehicle to be joining the collection soon, but. I know what it is. You do know what it is, yeah. <laughs> All right. Is the wireless CarPlay only on the Sonata N-Line, not the Elantra N-Line? So as of now, wireless CarPlay is only available on our larger screens that are equipped with the CCNC software, so Car Connected Navigation Cockpit. Mm -hmm. The Elantra at this time does not feature that, but I'm sure it will shortly. It's yeah, probably really, next. We can't probably. predict what the future holds, but yeah. it would be nice to see. Um, they were teasing it with that new update, so hopefully, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's one of the things that does make it. Um, I ordered my Elantra M-Line Ultimate back in October. Does it come with the 360 camera and parking sensors? Unrelated to this vehicle, but I thought I'd ask since you're live. No problem. So the current Elantra does not have a 360 camera. No. Well, it would not. No, just the, the rear. <laughs> Flair said the Kia Soul has wireless CarPlay. Just FYI, it absolutely does. That it does. Gabby, if you were to switch over from your current vehicle to this, would you? Absolutely. You guys know I am a sucker for more power, and this vehicle would satisfy my need for speed. My insurance, on the other hand, I don't know if they'd be a fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, I got a couple quotes this morning on another potential car, and yeah, yeah. It's, it, the insurance game is, is a tricky one. Some you think are going to be more expensive, but turn out aren't, because they have so many different variables on how they come up with their pricing, right? So Yeah. So I'm going to avoid anything that utilizes the word turbocharged in the insurance list. So that's yeah, I, that's I think, a sad reality for a little bit. I think four of my five right now. No. Are turboed? Four of my six are turboed right now. So yeah. me and insurance companies get along really, really well. Yeah. Zero out of one for me. All right, Japan Quick, welcome back. How are you? Yeah, it's good to see Japan Quick back. Um, let's see. <laughs> 2025 Hybrid Carnival. Yes, so Kia Canada released that the 2025 yeah. Hybrid would have a hybrid powertrain, of course. <laughs> and uh, we're super excited to see it. It will be utilizing a 1.6 liter turbo with, of course, your hybrid motor. So we're really pumped to see that. After the reveal at the auto show, I. I've never been one for a minivan lifestyle, but yeah. if I could have somebody and me be in the back seat of that one, the reclining rear seat was, was a very nice little setup. It wins people over. Wes, can you close the hood? Yep. Um, I just saw Samara ask for engine start, oh. so I'm just going to remote start it. This vehicle does have an active exhaust. Um, it also does have that artificial noise option. Like it I does. mentioned earlier, you can turn that off if you're not a fan of it. And so it's, it's a clean sounding one. Ooh, it yes. actually sounds what an exhaust should sound like, not synthesized. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, it sounds good. Um, I will point it out to you guys. It's going to sound horrible on our microphones. You really have to be there in person to experience it properly. Yeah. The mics never pick it up. Okay. Lock, press and hold start, three seconds. Okay, rev it, Wes. Actually, all right. If you want, sure. <laughs> oh, I'll do it. Right, we're not going to run it for too long just because we are inside the dealership. So I will put it into sport mode. All right. Okay, so we are engaging sport mode. Probably doesn't pick it up too well, but. Okay, so again, I'm not too sure how nice that's going to show on um, our live streams, but it sounds good in person, I'll tell you that. Oh All right. Let me there we go. I prefer the wheels of the previous gen N-Line over those ones, so I was actually going to say that. I do think I like the wheels of last year's N-Line a bit better, but nonetheless, I think these ones are still they're impressive. They definitely look sporty. They fit the N-Line brand, which is very good. Um, <laughs> 
Okay. Hey Wes, did you get any confirmation about free Lifetime Blue Link Plus coming to Canada? We haven't received any confirmation of that at this point. That was a good answer. <laughs> if you don't like the wheels, that's an excuse to go aftermarket. Totally agree. Wheels are one of the easiest things you can change. You don't have to worry about warranty or anything. It's just wheels. The, if this was my car, these would be my winter wheels. Yes, Because the Prellies would be coming off, winter tires on, and then, well, I'd probably throw some some fun cars. <laughs> some, some, some fun wheels. on there for the, the other months. All right. The TRD is a V6 and still slower than the Sonata and line Ray, Ray said earlier. Um, what is Can't the price? Uh, oh, let's talk about the starting price. Why is there so much plastic here? So the Sonata starts at $32,599 Canadian. That's for the preferred with trend. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for the end line, which is your top trim, but no all wheel drive, it is $39,199. Yeah, so it. Just under $40. It's, it'd be a hard comparison between this and Atlanta N. I'd, yeah. Because at that point, you're dealing both with front wheel drive sports yeah. cars. So. Yeah, and the 290, so this would have more power than the Elantra N, but the Elantra N, you can get a manual, so. Manual and even just feature for feature, it's a lot more track oriented, period, exactly. I find. Yeah. So there's a lot more sporty elements to the Elantra N, for sure. But nonetheless, this one's a bit more luxurious, for sure. Yeah, this would be the more one space. that you drive to the track, yes. take the N on the track. Take and your then... Elantra on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Adele said he went to the Toronto Auto Show yesterday and was hoping to see us, but I got to see the stars of the show on the main exhibit floor anyway. The Kia and Hyundai cars, that's true. You know it's consistent with every single video we post. There's a Kia or Hyundai in it. <laughs> Even if true. I'm not there, Wes is not there, there's a Kia or a Hyundai in it. <laughs> All right, so I think we should probably end off today's live video. I don't want it to be a too, too long one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to see more content regarding the Sonata, whether it be Endline or any of the other trims, please consider subscribing. Like I mentioned earlier, we post videos like this each and every single weekday and we live stream them. So we want to answer your questions in real time. We want to see what you guys have to say and hopefully you want to hear what we have to say because we're going to say it anyway. True. Fair enough. <laughs> very true. All right. Anything you want to add, Wes? Not at this point, but I am very excited to get this thing out of the showroom and take it for a spin mm -hmm. to uh, get that first hand experience like yourself. Get familiarized so, with it, yeah. if you will. It helps the sales portion. Yeah. It's... But, um, part of the process, <laughs> I will say. Um, of course, as we get more of these vehicles, hopefully we'll have one that we can film a test drive of you. So if that's yep. something you're curious about seeing, like I mentioned, don't forget to subscribe. We will do it eventually. <laughs> All right. And I think on a final note, I will tease that we're expecting a lot of very exciting vehicles arriving late, late February, early March. So if you want to see some new and exciting stuff, you know stay where to tuned. find us. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Join us again tomorrow live at 2 p.m. where me and Charlotte will be uncovering a brand new Kia vehicle. Ooh. Take care. Have a good Have rest of your nice. day. I don't know where to end it. <laughs>